Hi, my name is Caroline Poland, and I'm the founder and CEO of Poland and Associates Consulting. Today, I'm going to continue on with my trauma in the nervous system and the body series, and I'm going to talk about the corpus callosum. So parents and educators, what does this mean for you? Well, it means that for children who have an underdeveloped corpus callosum and who take longer to move information from hearing it into the part of their brain that processes what to do with it and allows them to take action, as well as living in sympathetic nervous system dominance, there's a lot of regulation that's needed and there's a lot of space that's needed. Remember in a former video, I talked about that space between stimulus and response, and we need to really work with that space with kids so that they can be successful. So here's an example of what that might look like. You are in a classroom of 30 students and some of these students come from hard places and hard backgrounds, have experienced significant amounts of trauma and maybe some kids have it. So they're all working on an assignment, writing, and you as the educator or maybe at home as a, as a kid is working, you as a parent, give an instruction. Okay, everyone put their pens down. And some kids will put those pens down right away but other kids, it might take time. And so they continue to write because that information hasn't moved over into the other side of their brain yet because that corpus callosum, which helps that information move, is underdeveloped. And so while everyone else puts their, their pens down, uh, that child might still be writing because they haven't their brain hasn't processed it yet. And this doesn't mean that they aren't listening and it doesn't mean that they are disobeying. It simply means that their brain has a lag time and hasn't yet processed that. And so it's on us as the adult, whether we're parenting or working in a trauma-informed classroom to understand how the brain works in that area and then create patterns around that. And so as you're working, you might say, all right, in 20 seconds, we're gonna put down our pens and then give a couple seconds. All right, everyone get ready to put down your pens now for uh, those, Kids with uh, well-developed corpus callosums, they might uh, proactively put down their pen, but what you're doing is you're giving a gap time so that kids can take in that information, that direction that you've given them, process it with that lag time, and be able to put down their pen. So what we don't want to do is discipline kids for something that they can't control. We don't want to discipline kids because of their biology. We want to work with their bi biology in this trauma-informed, brain-informed approach to be able to be successful in light of that. Now, as we continue to work in a trauma-informed and brain-informed way, we can begin to widen that space between stimulus and response. We can strengthen that prefrontal cortex. We can strengthen that corpus callosum so that information can move side to side in a healthy and productive way. And that's the good news. We aren't stuck with our biology, but it does take time to work with our biology. And so as educators, as parents, as people who work with um, kids, with students, we want to, we need to understand the brain in order to create policies and procedures and rhythms to life that take brain and biology and nervous system data into account. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Poland and Associates and continue to check back here for more information and videos during this time.